Good morning. How's everybody doing today? Uh, it's Wednesday, July 15th. 15th. Um, I'm in at my shop, as you can see, all my shop stuff behind me. Um, and I kind of wanted to pick up from, sort of pick up from where we left off last week when I was talking about basics in crystals, uh, just kind of your starters. Um, most people, when they start talking to me about learning crystals, uh, once they realize that they can't fold me up and put me in their pocket, which would be some trick, really, um, they start to ask, well, you know, how do you learn about crystals? And my first answer is usually um, sit with the crystals, spend time with the crystals, just get to know them. Get to know them the same way you get to know people. You listen to what they have to say, you stay quiet, and just be present with your crystals. But some people don't, they don't function that way, and that's okay. We all, um, we all integrate information in different ways, and some of us are much more experiential, and some of us are much more about tangible book learning. There's nothing wrong with any way um, of learning your crystals, learning how they communicate with you, what they're good for. So what I thought I would do is I thought today I would kind of go through a list of the cards and books that I keep at my fingertips here in the shop and that I would generally recommend to other people. Now before I do that, the other thing that I want to say is if you want to learn more about crystals, get out there and talk to people too. Because every person who experiences crystals experiences them in a different way. So you will get 105 different ways to listen, to be with, to work with, to understand your crystals by communicating with other people who work with crystals too. Go to your local crystal shops, Talk to the people who own the shops or who handle the crystals the most. Get to know them. Join lapidary clubs. Join gem and mineral clubs. There is, um, it's amazing the things that you can learn metaphysically about crystals by learning about the scientific and geological aspects of crystals too. Like if you know that a crystal is created by particular elements, um, those elements will color the work that that crystal does for you too. For example, if it's a volcanic crystal, if it's something that has to go through extreme heat to be um, completely liquefied, purified, and remolded and formed into something that you're able to hold, think about the kind of work that it can do for you in helping you through transitions and changes as well. So <clears throat> get out there, talk to other people who deal with crystals and rocks. Um, just know that some people won't see the divinity within the crystal the same way that you do, and that's fine, too. Um, take everybody from where they are, meet them where they're at, and just, you know, be honest and truthful and plain in your speaking, and, and you will find answers. So, for me, when I was first starting to learn about crystals other than just clear quartz, just the basic clear quartz, because I started with crystals when I was about 12 or 13 years old. And I started with clear quartz. And I used that, I'd say, for a good 10 years almost. And then I started to branch out in my very early 20s. I started to branch out and use other types of crystals and learn more about how they functioned, how I could use them with me, um, you know, how I could carry them on myself, which ones I could carry, which ones I couldn't. Um, it all became kind of personal preference and how I felt. And, you know, you, you get to know. But one of the very first things that I ran into was at the same time that I was learning about different kinds of crystals, I was also trying to learn the tarot. And the tarot has thrown me for a loop for years and years and years. And I am okay at reading tarot. I can do it with an appropriate deck. But I'm not anywhere near as good with tarot as I am with crystals. So I thought, well, let's kill two birds with one stone. And I got this lovely little deck. And all of the books and decks that I'm mentioning today... I will have a link in the bottom of the video to their Amazon page. Please go to your local bookstores, buy these books at your local bookstores, or order them through your local bookstores if you can. But I understand that some people live in areas and regions where this kind of stuff isn't permitted or isn't accepted, so it can be hard to find these types of things. Um, and some of them are out of print, so you're not going to be able to get them through your local bookstores. But the link is there just so that you can maybe see a picture or a better description of the item. Um, not so much to promote Amazon. I'm, I have no desire to promote Amazon in and of itself. I would much rather promote the small business, uh, being a small business owner myself. <laughs> but um, anyway, I digress. Back to the deck. 
So the very first deck I got was a deck called the Tarot of Gemstones and Crystals. And this is an AGM or an AG Mueller deck. I believe it's made, it says made in Belgium for AG Mueller Neuhausen. Um, and what I liked about this deck is that it's gorgeous. It's absolutely stunning. It has actual photographs of your crystals. Not just drawings, not just mock-ups, but actual photographs of what all of your crystals would look like. What I didn't like about this deck is it didn't seem like the crystals necessarily corresponded with the cards that they were representing. Um, and it actually made doing tarot a little bit more difficult for me. But what I did find was until I was able to really build up my mineral collection, this made a really nice set of flashcards. So it could stand in when I needed to work with certain crystals that I didn't own yet. I would pull the card and that card would actually stand in as a physical representation of that crystal. So I would put it on my altar space, on my workspace. Um, I'd carry it around with me. I'd tuck it into books as bookmarks. So that deck got a lot of travel. Well then, shortly after that, I started collecting decks because I was talking with people about different forms of divinations. So what I did was rather than so much teach divination, I collected a whole bunch of different forms of divination, like decks, like um, uh, crystals themselves, uh, oem, um, uh, runes, pendulums, dowsing rods, black mirrors, scrying balls. I'd collect all of these items and I would host nights where people could come and just be hands-on with items that they normally don't get to touch because they're either people's personal items and they're very sacred to those people so they don't want them touched or that they can't open up and look at because they're in a bookstore and nobody wants to crack the seal on a deck of cards and risk losing or tearing up the deck. So here people could come and I had, I think I had like 70 different types of tarot and oracle decks. Um, people could touch these things and they could open up my crystal collection and look at my crystals and handle my crystals and get a feel for the different ones. So then I started collecting all these books. People would bring me books and decks or I would find like one time a friend of mine and I went out and picked up like uh, 20, 30 tarot decks that somebody had put on Craigslist that they just set on a curb. So we just went and picked them up. So then this is one of them that I got. It's called the Crystal Diva Cards. Here's your book. And this one also is nice because it uses actual photos of your crystals. But this works on kind of a different system where, you know, for, exa for example, the amber here deals with non-resistance, um, being able to conform without fight. Amethyst deals with divine consciousness. So this works on more of an oracle setting than a tarot setting. The biggest difference between oracle and tarot is tarot has suits, oracle does not, typically. Um, we'll get into that in another video, but that's kind of the basic. Um, and then another deck that I had received at that time was called the Crystal Ally Cards. Um, and I actually had the fortune of listening in on a teleconference one time. This is um, Naisha Ashian. Um, and she was talking about her relationships with crystals. So if you ever get an opportunity to take a class with her or listen to a, listen to a talk from her, do it. It's really, it's really pretty interesting. Um, and these guys, these are nice cards too. Um, all nice cards, of course they are. Would I be telling you about them if they weren't? Um, oh, open, just open for me. And like I said, these will all have links below. And these are very artsy, so you're not necessarily getting the photo of the uh, crystal itself, but you're getting more of an int artistic interpretation of what these crystals might represent. Okay? So that's another way you can do it. And then for people who really just don't want to go that route at all. Oh, let me go back. And last week as I was getting ready to record, I had someone walk in and she actually handed me this deck and said, I just had a feeling you could use these, and I think I mentioned them last week. Um, this is called the Crystals and Stones Learning Cards. They're self-study flashcards. And again, you get pictures of the actual crystals in many of their forms, and on the back side it tells you about what they look like, what they could be used for for healing, where you can find them, what their hardness is, what chakra they work with, some of the things that they're good for. Okay. For some people it's books. Some people really want to have books. <clears throat> Um, one of the books I carry in my shop, 
there's a really rough Amazon um, link for this one. It doesn't have a photo, and it's an older version of the book, but it's the only Amazon link I could find. Um, it's called The Magic of Crystals and Gemstones, and this is just like a little 50-page. Um, this talks about different shapes of crystals, tumbled and polished, and then it actually goes into these are the crystals. It has photos, location, you know, what you can do with them. So this is a nice little book, too. Um, Diane Bloom is a crystal healer and a crystal teacher. She's from up around this way. This is her kiss guide to layouts. Um, and layouts are anytime you take crystals and you use them in a pattern or geometric shape. Let's see if I can find any pictures at all. <coughs> Sorry, don't mean to be so... <coughs> Um, she doesn't really have pictures, which is probably a good thing, because I shouldn't be showing you pictures from her particular book. But what she does have is, like, here's a page that says, don't take anything personally. And she has listed the body parts where you would put specific crystals to help encourage the idea of not taking things personally. Okay? So this is a great book for layouts. And I actually bought this book when I was taking a class from her up here in Wisconsin. She's another great teacher. If you can take a class from her, she's amazing. Um, this is one of those little half-price books finds that I got. Um, and I don't know who put it out originally, but it's a, it's a nice fat book. Look at that. It's a nice book. Um, there's about 500, 600 pages in here. Yeah, 500 pages. So this is the book. That co it's called Crystal's Color and Chakra, or The Magic of Crystal's Color and Chakra. And it is just what it says. So it talks about your color, the crystals that fall in it, what those colors are good for in your life, how they can help you with your healing, um, folklore traditions, elements. Here's air. So this is a nice little book, too. Um, this is a book by Ashley Levy. And Ashley Levy lives up here in Wisconsin as well, just outside of Madison. She owns a little shop called Mimosa. Uh, in Madison, and Mimosa is like a little metaphysical bookstore, so they've got statuary and books and cards and crystals and incense and chimes and all kinds of great stuff. And Ashley is an amazing teacher. I've known her for several years. Um, I've actually learned an awful lot from Ashley, and she's got the Love and Light School of um, Energy Healing, and if you check that out, I'll try and remember to put a link in the bottom for it. Um, but this is one of her books. This is The Healing Properties of Crystals and Stones. Okay. And this is another one. There's no pictures, but it does describe pretty clearly what your crystals are and what they're good for. Um, quartz, amethyst or quartz is good for sixth chakra or seventh chakra. Um, and it talks about how it helps you to connect more with fairy realm to enhance kind of your own peace, your happiness and joy. So this is another good book to look into. And then my absolute go-to book that was a huge present from my husband one year for Christmas, birthday, and all the I love yous forever. Um, this is known as the, the Crystal Bible. So this is Melody's Love is in the Earth, the Crystal and Mineral Encyclopedia. It's a big boy. This is like a $100 book, roughly. Um, it comes with a really nice dust cover, but I chew those up crazy. But what's really nice about this one Full color photos. Full color photos, full descriptions, hardnesses, locations, um, anomalies that you might find in the crystals themselves, formations, um, different names, all kinds of stuff in this book. This book has been just an invaluable book for me. It's been well worth the money. Um, and anytime somebody asks what the best crystal book is, I always say save up your money and get that one. It's a great book. So I show you all of these so that you have something that you can keep at your fingertips as you start to learn so that you can learn at your own pace so that you can kind of get a feel for what crystals um, you might find near you in the ground, crystals that you might be able to find in stores around you, crystals that you can afford, crystals that you can put on your big wish list. I got platinum. Um, but this is another way that you can learn more about crystals. So I hope this helped. Uh, if you have any comments, just drop them below and I will try and keep up with them as best I can. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys again next week. Bye.